Today you'll see two gorgeous neat dresses that are super fun to sew. It has a skirt with pleats, love that. Lots of fun sewing to see, keep watching. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel all about sewing, limitless sewing, and today's episode, knit sewing, specifically some dresses. This is a new Oasis top and dress from Sinclair Patterns, and it's my first pattern test that I do for Sinclair. I really enjoyed it, and when I saw the liner of this one for the test decor, I couldn't help but apply. It's such a cute design. You can see the line out here has an asymmetric bodice. This could also be a top, but I was mainly interested in sewing the dresses. I was planning to sew a top with a little bit of a scrap for a muslin fit. You can see that bodice is asymmetric. It's shorter on one side, goes longer on the other. The shorter side is meant to hit below the bust and the longer side is meant to hit below the waist. I think that's always so unique and fun to look at. And if you use a separate fabric for the bodice and the skirt, you can really see this asymmetry. I love that. And then below this asymmetric bodice that is meant to be fitted, you have a pleated skirt. Pleated all the way around, you have seven pleats on the front, seven pleats on the back. There is one pattern piece that you cut twice mirrored and when you look at the skirt piece it's higher on one side and lower on the other to match the bodice because the bodice is also slanted so so fun to put together love that for the neckline you have a scoop neckline or a regular one that's a little higher i'm always drawn to scoop and the fact that the pattern has it there is great Otherwise, I always hack patterns that are higher to end up a little lower like that. And here there are no sleeves, but it's not a tank as such because it's dropped. It goes beyond your shoulder joint like that. And it gives you that cover right here. And at the bottom, it's very closed. It's the perfect armhole that I like to sew. Perfect, perfect, because you have all this armpit area covered and you won't be showing any of your brow or anything like that. Both of these, the neckline and the armhole, are finished with bands. That is always super easy to sew and gives you a really nice clean finish. For the length of the skirt piece, you can choose several lengths, peplum, above knee, mid knee, below the knee. So for the fabrics, there's quite a few things to say here. If you want to just make the top, you can use so many neat fabrics as long as it stretches 50% horizontally and 30% vertically. And you can use lightweight, medium weight, heavy weights, whichever type of neat fabric you want, as long as it stretches like that. The muslin I made was in an ITY, but although I will plan to wear it and I do like it, I didn't take pictures of it or I'm not going to show it to you here because I was mainly interested in the dresses. <laughs> but I did make my top in ITY and I think I would prefer to make the top in something heavier and that's where I struggle because I just really can't find any cotton lycra here that has nice spandex and recovery like that. It's just really hard for me to find. I either find really, really heavy cotton spandex that is not nice but it's great for yoga waistbands. Or I just find ITY and rayon spandex, which is too light. So I decided to use the top just as a muslin for now. But for the dress, for that bodice needs to have some strength because you're going to be attaching a skirt with a lot of pleats on it. And even if you use a really light weight knit on the skirt, it's gonna pull that bodice down. So you can't really use a very light weight knit for your bodice. Also, it is semi-fitted there, so you definitely don't want to use rayon spandex or a really light poly knit ITY on your bodice. I've done a little trick and I always have a way around that lightweight knit on the bodice and all I do is cut my bodice twice and have two layers there and that solves the issue of ITY being too light for the bodice. So I have two versions, one is color blocked and for that one I used a denim look cotton lycra that is medium weight structured, it stretches what it needs to and it's strong enough to hold the weight of the skirt and for that skirt I used a print so I have a solid and a print on the bottom and that's just a light rayon spandex and I love that version, super nice and the second dress I made is entirely in ITY so ITY is perfect for the skirt but not for the bodice but the bodice is double and then it's perfect anyway because the Oasis top and dress is a new pattern it has a discounted price for the first week. I will leave all the information below, my affiliate link also if you would like to use it. When you use my affiliate link to buy a pattern, that means that part of that purchase comes back to me as commission. This is one of the ways that you can support the work I do here on YouTube without it costing you anything. So I'm always super grateful if you use my affiliate link. Thank you so much. For the sizing, zero to 30 are included. And as always, there are height files there. I'm putting a diagram so you can see that there's a 
petite, a regular and a tall file that you choose first and then you go and choose your size. I always sew the tall file and it's worked perfectly for me every single time. I never have to lengthen bodices or sleeves or skirts. It always just seems to be made specially for me because I fit into that height range. So that's always so good. And then I chose a size 16. Also, from size zero, you start with a BC cup size. That's how that size is drafted and it goes progressively larger. And when you get to a size 30, you have an E bust cup size. So that sort of drafting is already in the pattern. And for the size 16 that I make, it's got a CD cup size, which is perfection because that is my sewing cup size. So that's always very fortunate. About the feet, you have a bit of negative ease at the bust. It's about one and five eighths of an inch. So slightly smaller at the bust and that's fine. That's why your knit fabric has to stretch 50%. So that is perfectly fine. And then at the waist, depending if you're sewing the top, you have a bit more ease, four inches. And if you're sewing the dress, you have less, two inches. And that makes sense because you want the bodice to be nicely fitted here. A loose fitting bodice on a knit doesn't really look that great in my opinion. And I'm even happy to have zero ease, you know, on a neat bodice, but the two inches is perfectly fine. Then if you're sewing the top, you have zero ease at the hips, but if you're sewing the dress, you have plenty, plenty, plenty because there are 14 pleats on this skirt. Maybe if you looked at your chart and you thought I need to blend from a 20 waist to a 22 hip, maybe you could just sew the same waist size for one size. I think if you had a two size difference between the waist and the hips, I would definitely be blending out sizes and you always see diagrams, really helpful ones in the instructions that show you how to do that. For the practical segment of my videos, I have the segment called Up Close and So Personal and that is where I show you how to do things, how I do things really up close so you can really see how to put a garment together in the parts that are most tricky. So for this case, I focused on those pleats, how to put this bodice together. It is very simple, nothing too complex and you can do it for sure. I'm also showing you some unconventional fitting that I did with my muslin just yeah you're gonna see what I did with my muslin and it really really helped me make the dress let's see all the sewing don't you think this is starting to wear me you've been raining down like hail on a week. I made a muslin with this leftover ITY that I'd used for something else and I just wanted to check the fit of the top. I think it's perfect. This is a size 16. If you make the top version, it'll hit around the mid hip and it'll have zero ease at the hips. So you can see that it is a fitted top at the hips. I'm mainly interested in the dress though. Before cutting and sewing this, I used my pattern piece and made the mark of where the bodice is on this because it is the same pattern it's just a different cut line and i did really want to check that placement before cutting my bodice pieces using this muslin to do that so you can see that it will go underneath the bust had this been a little higher like this and like cutting through my bust or anything like that it would have been a good indication to add length above there and you know this is very individual it can fit different for so many different bodies so this is one of the reasons i made a muslin specifically to see where the seam would be for the asymmetric bodice and that's good. Now I'm planning to make one of the dresses with a print with large scale flowers and leaves and so having this top on my body I'm just going to mark right here around my bust and just try to mark as much as I can a circle around there. You can see the silly circle. So now that I take this off place my paper piece on top and mark exactly where my bust is going to be. This is harder to do on knit fabrics because you have vertical stretch as well with knits. So I'd rather figure that out on the body, the bodice where it hits and the bust. So that was one of the reasons I sewed this muslin. Top is done, it's perfect, it fits really well and I will wear it. But as for tops go, I prefer tops that have a little bit more ease at the hips. After drawing those silly circles on the muslin while I had it on my body, I was able to mark where that is actually on the pattern. So when I cut my larger print bodice, I'll make sure that I don't have anything specific right there and right there so that I'm happy with the print placement. I have the two skirt pieces here mirrored, the two layers on top of each other, and you'll see that there's a lower end and then it goes up like that. So this length here will be shorter and from this side the length will be longer. Depending on what length you're making, this whole piece will be long or short. It could be a peplum, to the knee, below the knee, even maxi. I'm making the above the knee one. But 
all this area on the top is what is important to see and that's where all the pleats are marked here is one of the edges and you'll see little dashes there little marks like this and when you look at your fabric it'll look sort of like a zigzag but then when the pleats come together then it'll all make sense there's seven pleats here across one skirt piece and the other skirt piece that is at the back also has seven pleats. These two are mirror images. So I'm just going to take this top piece and work on this one first. This is the side of the skirt that's longer. So you saw that it was a slant going up and this is the corner that's longer. You'll see some yellow dots. That was the way I marked my pleats. There's a yellow dot there, one there, one there, one there. From the corner, you have a slant going down and the first little peak. That notch needs to match that notch right there. So we'll just come ahead, bring the fabric forward until that reaches the dot right there and put a pin on it. Doing pleats with wovens is a little easier um, but just be careful and just try to align everything as best as you can. So that's one pleat done. Then we look at this again and you'll see another slant going down and another peak. This one has to match that mark right there. So that's two pleats down. You can see another slant going down and another peak. So take this one and bring it to the next mark. And this is how we will form all the pleats on this skirt piece. And there are seven of them. The jagged edges are because the pleats have been true to the slant. Because the bodice is slanted, this is also slanted. That's why you're gonna get a skirt piece that looks like that. So all the edges should match. You need to have a really straight edge. Although it is slanted, you see there's no excess fabric anyway. So I'll scoot this over. Here's a slant going down. The next one. And then we're up to the last one. This is how the skirt piece is going to look. Seven pleats, they're all going that way towards the longer end. This is the shorter end of the skirt. Okay, here you can see the skirt from further away. You can see this short end and the long end over here. The fold of the pleat is directed towards the long end of the skirt. So that's all pinned, that's all ready to go and I'll just repeat everything on the other side of the skirt. Remember the pleats are going towards the long end of the skirt so on the other side it will just be opposite. So here's the other skirt, the long end is on this side now and the short end is here. So I'm just going to be folding the pleats this way now. I'm about to fold the last pleat for this skirt, the one that has the long end over here and the short end over there. I've been folding the pleats that way, towards that way. And on this one, because it's the opposite of the other side, when you fold a pleat, the slant here will go up and then you have the peak. When we were folding the pleats on the other side, when we finished folding a pleat, the slant was going down. So it's just the opposite, it's just mirrored. And you can see the slant going up there, the little notch on the peak. And we need to meet that one with that one. And this one finishes the pleats on this side. Here you also have a slant, but in this case going the other way, they're just mirrored. Now that we have all the pleats together, we need to base them up on the top on the edge so that we can hold them in place and then we can attach this to the bottom edge of the bodice. These are the two bodice pieces and I have them on separate paper. I, I trace them from the actual pattern because this bodice is sort of overlaid over the top version and there is a slight difference here in the waist and I just didn't want to chop the other one to get this bodice so I just quickly traced it. I think it was the easiest option. So this is the front and this is the back. You can see that they have a short little side seam there and the other side has a long side seam. When we attach the skirt, this side seam that's longer will have the shorter end of the skirt attached and this side seam that is shorter will have the longer edge of the skirt attached and that's how you're going to get an even hem on your peplum or whatever length you're making. So these are cut as a single layer. They have to be because they're not symmetrical. You can't put this on the fold. Mark the notches that you see on the armholes and necklines because that's going to help you put your bands together later. Okay, I've pinned the back piece there, extended on the wrong side of my fabric. This is the long side seam. That is the short side seam. You need to have the short seams together, the longer ends on the side, or you can put them inversely. You know, you can have the long ends here and the short ends there, but they need to be mirrored. What's mainly different here is the, say, the shape of the armhole and the shape of the neckline. Just make sure they look like this. I'm just basting along the top edge to keep the pleats together and I always like to baste in the direction of the pleats. 
So on this skirt piece that you can see now, I'm sewing as you would, you know, with the bulk of the fabric towards your left hand. That's how you normally sew. So that's fine, that can be done. I'm pulling out the pins as I go at the last moment really because I don't want the pleats to move. On the other skirt piece that is mirrored to the one that you just saw me baste, to sew in the direction of the pleats, I'm sewing with all the bulk of the skirt inside the machine on my right hand. It is a little bit awkward, I'm trying to pull out pins with my left hand, it's a little bit slower, but I feel the pleats are basted properly. I really don't like basting pleats against the bulk of the pleat, against the fold that the pleat has because sometimes it just gets caught under the presser fold and you get a little paca there, like an extra pleat and I want to keep it as neat as possible so that's how I'm doing these pleats on the other side. Here we have one of the skirt pieces and this is the back bodice. You can tell because the neckline is higher there and you can see the slant of the bodice and the slant of the skirt. Short little side seam, the longer side of the skirt longer side seam of the bodice with the shorter end of the skirt and it will have the same length here at the bottom. So I'll just match these up, put them right sides together, sew them together and then I'll do the same thing with the other bodice, the front bodice and the other skirt. I've got the bottom of the bodice pinned to the top of the skirt. I've got the skirt on the bottom and I'm going to serge this together. The seam allowance on the pattern is a quarter of an inch, so it is thought so it was designed to be sewn on the serger. Of course, you can sew it on the sewing machine with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. As an optional step, you can add elastic here on the waist seam just to give the dress a bit more structure. The skirt is pretty full, there are pleats there, so it can weigh the bodice down. I'm not concerned about that because my knit is pretty structured and I feel it's going to be strong enough to hold the skirt. And you know it's, it's nice and stretchy but it is not a lightweight knit so that's why doing the bodice with a lightweight knit is not recommended and it's recommended that it be a little bit more stable just a tad heavier you know so I'll just go ahead and search this and then just repeat the same on the other side This is how it's going to look on the outside. Now if there's any of these basting stitches that are seen on the outside, I'll just pull them out. It's just that the seam allowance is so small, maybe some of the basting stitches will be visible. Maybe in a little section like right there. So I'll just have a look and remove that. I'll repeat with the other side. And then you just put this together, you sew your shoulder seams, you sew your side seams, you finish the bands. This is my first dress really love it you can see that the fabric on the top sort of looks like denim it's so nice i love fabric like this whenever i find some i buy some and i have a lot of yardage of this because i like it for skirts for pants for shorts and now i even have a bodice with it if i grab this you can see how well it stretches and the recovery it has it's excellent quality it's so good and it was perfect for this bodice because it was going to have the structure to hold up the skirt has all these pleats. You can see the short bodice, short side seam, longer side seam there, the longer side of the skirt matching the short side of the side seam of the bodice and the opposite here, longer side seam, shorter skirt and then your skirt ends up nice and even right there. And then I have bands made with the same fabric. Now I'm still getting used to my serger and careful not to trim away seam allowances but you know I'm still getting used to the machine so when I was sewing the band on this little bit right there you can see that I ate some of the of the seam allowance there and I have the band be slightly narrower there compared to all the rest fortunately this was at the back right here at my neck where it's always going to be covered with my hair so I'm happy about that you can't go back once the blade has cut your fabric it's been cut <clears throat> Fortunately, it wasn't that bad and I'm so glad that didn't happen anywhere super visible like at the front. I mean, in that case, I would have unpicked the band and cut another band and done it again. By the time I got to sewing the bands on the armhole, I was already super careful with the serger, with what I was doing, slowed down. There had done that little boo-boo right there. And yeah, super nice. I have a one inch hem allowance done with a twin needle. It works really well with this rayon spandex. On the inside, all the main seams are sewn just with the serger. The pattern is designed to have a quarter of an inch. So that's what you see on the shoulder, the seams pressed to the back. 
side seams pressed to the back and you can see the seam that unites the bodice to the skirt so nice very simple super fun to make you won't take you that long once you've got the pleats sorted this is one of my oasis dresses and you can really see the features of the bodice with this one because it's color blocked so you can see that on this side it's shorter it goes underneath the bust then it goes diagonally to below the waist on the other side love that and then i have a pleated skirt underneath super pretty it is a full sk the skirt has a lot of volume but it's not super full and i like that the pleats don't give it that bulky it's still nice and neat right here where it unites to the bodice this is a denim look cotton spandex it has nice amount of stretch the amount required and enough structure and strength to hold up the skirt i'd say it's a light to medium weight knit much heavier than the one on the bottom so i like the combination i love that this looks like denim and the navy matches the navy on this pink and white leaf print love it so my waist is about there so on this side it's a little lower on the other side it's higher and sort of at the actual waist you have a bit of ease there because the pleats are already there so i think it's a really nice look really comfortable the pleats will just drape over your belly i chose the lower scoop neckline there is a regular one that's a little higher but i always like a, a lower one if there's an option you can see that the shoulder seam is slightly curved it follows the shape of the shoulder and it's dropped so it's beyond your shoulder joint right there and it gives you really nice cover it's a really nice closed armhole and i really like that that's what i always look for so you can see that there's no armpit business showing anything like that so i really like it and it's so easy to sew with the bands very easy the bands are with the same fabric i have done some top stitching to hold them flat maybe you can see that really nice easy clean finish here for the neckline and the armhole super easy dress to sew and fun because it's got something extra with the pleats i'm always looking for neat styles that have something different and i think this dress is super different and you know i love asymmetry i love this bodice that you can do this sort of thing but I've also made a dress that's just in the same print so I've had a lot of fun with this one and I know it'll get a lot of wear This is my second one and I really wanted to make it in ITY although it's not a recommended fabric and it's totally correct to not be recommended because it is too lightweight for this type of bodice but you know I've done this in the past I do it anyway but I just cut two bodice pieces and I had enough to cut a front bodice twice normally but then the back bodice inside has a seam in the center because I couldn't really get it into the fabric I had no one's going to see it and I have double layer here of ITY if you touch like that and it's so nice to put on because it's so smooth inside it means all the seams on the sides are enclosed you don't feel them so for this one I sewed the seams on my sewing machine the shoulder seams the side seams press the seams open for both layers and so they're just nesting together in there and it's so nice on and I've got my bands, in this case, the same type of uh, denim look jersey, but in black, grayish. That's what I have there. And I think it looks nice because I do have some black in the print. And because I had two layers, I was able to enclose my skirt seam within the two layers. That gives me a really clean finish inside. This is not part of the pattern, of course. <laughs> this is just something extra that I did for this one. Because the two layers there will allow you to do that. So that is perfect. It feels so nice on. It's so smooth, so clean. There is a free pattern from Sinclair called the Knit Skater Dress that I made about a year ago. And I did the exact same thing. Fitted bodice. I did two layers of ITY with a flowy skirt. Super the same. So I will link that video below if you want to see how to do that. Because it is the exact same thing. So it is slightly different but so worth it to have a finish like this inside. It feels so supportive on, it feels so nice on. You're not gonna see the outlines of your brow or any of those texture things that might poke out like that. So very nice. And then because the fabric I use for the bands is, is heavy R, uh, it fits really well with these two layers of ITY. I wouldn't have wanted to make the bands out of ITY in a single layer, sewing it onto two of these because it just wouldn't match the weight of the fabrics like that, even though they are the same. 
So very, very fun to sew, beautiful, same hem, same twin needle. Cutting the two circles for my bust area on the pattern was really helpful. And I played around with the pattern placement and this big leaf was gonna end up there anyway, but it wasn't right on my bust, like my bust was around there. So I was happy to have that. I wouldn't have wanted this to be a little lower there. So yeah, it is really helpful to cut those bust circles and marking them on an actual garment like the muslin I made is foolproof. You can't make a mistake with that. You just mark your circles with chalk and then put your pattern piece on top and see where that is on the actual pattern. Mark it, cut it out, and then you're set to go to cut out prints like that and not have little flowers on your apex, which is not cool. This is my second Oasis dress and this is in the same print. I have the same bodice, but this time I cut it flipped so that the shorter side is on this side and the longer side is on this side. It doesn't really matter. You can do it whichever way. I just wanted to make it different. And it's the same dress, the same pleats, the same length above the knee, the same size 16. The only difference is that ITY is too light, really. It's not recommended for you to sew the dress. You can use ITY for the skirt, no drama, but I think for the bodice, it would just be too weak. It wouldn't hold the weight of the pleats really that well. So I have a shortcut way around that, and that's just to cut the bodice twice. I have two layers of ITY on the bodice, one on top of each other. That just transforms the ITY into a heavier knit, which is perfectly fine, has the amount of stretch required, and then I can get a dress in the same fabric while keeping this light at the bottom and a little heavier at the top. Just a trick. <laughs> Here's the end of this bodice and it finishes right there. On the inside, the seam is enclosed within the two layers of the bodice, so it feels really nice here on this area of the body. I don't have a seam right there. I didn't need to use the serger and actually the only place I use the serger for this dress is on the side seams. <laughs> I have the same scoop neckline here and I use the same type of cotton lycra for the bands right here but this one is in a black tone. The other dress had navy so I think it matches because this print has black, blue, like all the colors. You can cut this skirt piece to be a peplum so about that length then above the knee, mid knee, maxi, you know you can make this dress however you like. I just I'm always going to make a dress above the knee because that is what I like and that's what I feel good in. So ITY, line bodice, same pleats, super flowy skirt, feels so comfortable on and love it. <laughs> really recommend the pattern. I had such fun making these two. You know, you can use so many fabrics for this dress. If you have a smaller piece of a really good knit that you have lying around, it could be perfect for your bodice. And then you can find a lighter knit to make your skirt with if you like that color blocked look. I love the color blocked look because it really highlights asymmetric bodice, which is something that I really like. So yeah, so many options with this. And you can make the top as well. It would be a really, really easy to make simple top that you're gonna wear a lot. I just wanted to focus on the dresses because I just like the dresses <laughs> because dresses are my jam and yeah it's such a great pattern I think the height files available with this brand are always amazing because the fitting process will be less intense if you choose a pattern that's made for your height the next video you'll see from me will feature a bit of woven sewing try to mix it up I'm excited to share that so keep your eyes open for the next video I'll see you very soon happy sewing bye